Happy Wednesday, West Michigan. Welcome to Fox 17 Unfiltered. I'm Max Goldwasser. We are here in a very important space, the Gerald R. Ford Presidential Museum with Morel Lukey. I gotta say, there's something about sitting in this cabinet room that makes me feel very powerful. <laughs> it's a very official feeling space, yeah. yeah. You're in the president's spot. How does it feel to be the leader of the free world for a moment? <laughs> a lot of responsibility, for sure. <laughs> Obviously, Mr. Ford held that position for three years himself. Grand Rapids leans into its connection to the former president. What do you think are some of the main things people should think about when they think about Gerald Ford? His presidency obviously comes to mind. He's the only president who was not elected to office, either as president or vice president. So that's really a unique position that he holds in American history. And he really saw his role as president as a steward of the office and really seeking to bring the country together, trying to promote unity to move beyond Watergate during his time in office. But his uniqueness started even before his time in office, really from the time he was born, because Gerald R. Ford isn't even his birth name. He was born Leslie Lynch King Jr. His mother actually left his father, Leslie Lynch King Sr., when Ford was a toddler, and they moved to Grand Rapids. Ford was known as Junior or Junie, and when Dorothy Ford met her husband, Gerald, he became Junior Ford and eventually took his stepfather's name. Just call him Junior, good to go. Mm -hmm. Are there any aspects about his life or his time in office that maybe might not be the first scene that comes to people's minds. Since you're here to celebrate his birthday on Friday, I thought it might be fun to talk a little bit about his first birthday as president and how he spent that day. On that day, he first had a public birthday with White House staff, and then Betty surprised him with a surprise birthday party in the residence with some friends invited after that. Apparently he showed up late because he didn't know what was happening, and he decided to go for a swim in the pool, so everyone was kind of waiting on him, but of course he's the president, so, you know, they're willing to wait. It was a surprise that maybe someone should have told him about it at some point. <laughs> maybe given him a little bit of a yeah. heads up that he should cut his swim short. His friends brought him a whole series of presents, things like a golf club that had a gold head on it. Mm -hmm. He received a concrete poolside frog to grace the newly constructed White House pool. He got some red swim trunks that had the presidential seal emblazoned on them. Those sound like fitting gifts <laughs> considering what he was doing right before the party. Exactly, exactly. And so I really love these gifts because you can really see kind of where his interests lie in athletics. The fact that he loves golf, that he loves swimming and things like that. So my first thought was, this is fantastic. Do we have any of these artifacts in our collection? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately we don't, but what I did find is this really interesting gift here, which is a trophy. So you can see it has a wooden base and a metal top that has kind of a thatched roof and then a little hanging sign that says Camp David. And so this was given to Ford, his first birthday as president by the Camp David stewards. He really made a point when he and Betty came into the White House to be really open with the American public. He invited the press in um, back to swimming. There are all these great photographs of him, you know, diving into the White House pool. And so that openness and that candor and also the sense of fun that uh, he and Betty had, they really liked to throw parties and host things. It really carries over into their interactions with the staff. And so you see it in things like this present. How much did Gerald R. Ford loved Grand Rapids too. Throughout his time in Congress, he was constantly coming back to the city to campaign, to talk to constituents. So he very strongly felt his roots here in Grand Rapids. And again, that's why we have this museum here. He wanted his presidential museum to be in his hometown. Yeah. And to mark President Ford's 110th birthday, there will be a wreath laying ceremony at his tomb, which is at the Presidential Museum. It's going to happen on Friday morning. And former First Lady Betty Ford, she created that tradition back in 2006, shortly after Ford himself passed away. Wreaths will be laid on behalf of the Ford family, law enforcement agencies, and President Joe Biden.